In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a form using a Word document. Because you've probably encountered this kind of form before, where someone created a form in Word that was probably meant to be written on and printed out. But when you go to type information in, these underscores end up causing a lot of problems. The headers end up getting pushed down. The formatting ends up being crazy. And it's just sort of difficult to use. When you insert form fields into this document, what you do is you're saying only these areas where I choose should have data entered into them. So when I click in here, I can type in a last name and a first name. And I can or a grade from a drop down list or a date like that. I can have things like check boxes. And overall, it just makes things a lot simpler, more clean and better organized. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is make sure that you have the developer tab up on the top of your Word, and you probably don't. To access that, go up to the File button, head down to Options, and go to Customize Ribbon. Over here we have a list of main tabs, and your developer tab is probably unchecked. Make sure it's checked, and press OK. That should open up the Developer tab to you. You might need to close down Word and open it back up. And these are all the tools that we need to create the forms. So the first thing I always do is get rid of these underscores, because they're just going to get in the way. And these words down here that weren't even going to line up anyways. So all the form fields that we have at our disposal are right here. And we end up using most of them, or only a few of them, most of the time. So for example, after the word student, I'm just going to add last name. And I have two options for text, rich text or simple plain text. Rich text will allow people to use things like underlining, bold, change the font, that kind of thing. And there's no reason not to choose that most of the time. So if I click that, I've now entered a form field that says click here to enter text. If I go into design mode, I can even change what it says in there. I can also click on that and go into properties. And each kind of form field has different properties. I could add a title, for example last name. One of the properties that is a good thing to do is to content control cannot be deleted. I'm going to check that box. So the person using the form cannot delete this last name box. And if that's not checked, a lot of times it will happen by accident and the person won't know how to get it back. So now I can't get rid of it. It's there. Another kind of drop down or form fill box that we might use is a drop down box. says choose an item. If I go into properties, I can decide what items to choose from. So I'm going to add, since this is for grade, 6, 7, 8, and so forth. And then those are your options. I'm also going to click on properties and say contents, I'm sorry, contents cannot be deleted. You don't want to check contents cannot be edited because then they can't actually choose anything. For date, there actually is a, a form field called date picker. I'm going to choose cannot be deleted. You can even pick what format the date is shown in. If I add a title, that'll be on top. And it really is almost that simple. I'm going to go through this form, delete these underscores, and decide what kind of form I want to have for these, where I might need to come in here and type an X, and after a while it's going to sort of push things around and get everything in the way, I'm going to use a checkbox. So on and so forth. When I finish and the document's ready to, to, uh, to be sent out, one thing that I typically do is I'm going to go to Restrict Editing. 
and I'm going to allow only this type of editing in the document. I'm going to set that as filling in forms. That means the only thing that someone can do to this document are fill in the forms. They can't write outside of the forms, and this will help keep it organized and neat. I need to click on Yes, Start Enforcing Protection. If I want to enter a password, I can. I typically don't. And press OK. So I'm going to go through this document and add form fills for each of the sections. Let me talk about a few tips and tricks. You might have noticed that I made my initial questions up at the top of the document in sort of a vertical format as opposed to a horizontal format, and that was on purpose. If we stick with the horizontal format as it was, as we type in these boxes, they do actually change size and get moved around, which can sort of mess with the formatting a bit. So it's just easier to give each little area its own space on a different line. Also, I'm doing a piece down here where I'm asking various questions, and you respond based on a scale from 1 to 5. That would be very tedious for me to have to create this same form field over and over again. So what I can do is actually select the form field and copy it with control C. Then on my next line, I can add the last question. And then I can paste it with control V. And you'll see that sure enough, I've copied all of those same settings. So I don't have to do it over and over again. So now I've finished the document. I have all my form fields in place. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete those couple so I get back to its normal state. I have locked it for formatting so that you can only change things in the form fields. I can't, for example, delete anything around here. I can't move things around. So now it's time to save, but I'm going to save it in a certain way. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to put it on my desktop. I'll call this Sit Form Revised. And instead of saving it as a Word document, I'm going to save it as a Word Macro Enabled Template. So now when I save it, it should pop up. Here it is on my desktop. And when I open it, it'll work just like it should. I can add check boxes. I can choose dates. You'll see I can't come up here and change anything inside of anything other than a form field. But when I go to press save, Word is going to force me to change the name, put it somewhere else, and make me save it as a Word document. The great thing about that is that I can't accidentally save over the blank copy and regret it later on. 